Using 3D printers for quick reverse engineering. Welcome to another episode. I often have the need to reverse engineer items, either to make something that will interoperate with that item uh, or to make something that uh, doesn't exist anymore, to repair an item that's broken, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some techniques that I use in combination with a 3D printer to iterate quickly before committing to something like making an injection mold or making the part out of metal. Let's uh, head to the computer and I'll show you the first thing. This part, which is a tray for my Heimer, has a number of different dimensions that I want to make sure are correct, both along this direction and also the diameter. Now this particular part is 9 inches by 2 inches by almost 1 inch. And when I print it at uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height, it takes about 4.5 hours to print. That's obviously not something I want to do every time I want to test the, the fit. One of the techniques that I use is I slice it so that it's a much thinner part. And this will take a lot less time to print. The other thing that I do is for testing something like this, I use a thicker layer height. So if I print at 0.3 millimeters, this takes about 20 minutes to print, which is a lot faster. So let me show you the result of the iterations I did that way. So the goal was to 3D print a tray for my Heimer so that it would be safe in my drawer. And I did three versions of it. As you can see here, the first version, let's see if I get it correct. Yeah, um, was this one here. And it was a little too tight, so it didn't slip in, in and out easily. It took a little bit of force. And that's because this dimension here I meant to make shorter, but I actually made longer. So then I printed a second version, and again, I made this length even longer instead of shorter, so I went the wrong way. No problem though, because this took about 20 minutes to print. And then the final version is just right. So after printing this version, I could print the full tray, which I printed at 0.3 layer height. And as you can see, it fits just fine. Now there are a few things I'd probably change if I were to do this again, but I don't feel like um, making changes. One of them is I would have the lip come up a little on here to keep it from rotating as much. And I'd probably put some more lips here to help protect the tip a little bit. I'm not going to make that change though because I think what I have here right now is just fine. So I'm going to put this in my cabinet with the list of dividers. Oh, the other thing is I have these slots on the side and so I needed to get the spacing correct on this. And so again I printed out a test piece and for this test piece I have a slot here and then a long slot here. And what I discovered is that this didn't come far enough this way. So I put this in on the list of dividers and then I marked with a pen that I can just barely see and I'm sure you can't see where the two slots should be. And then I printed another version of that with the two, three slots here, here, and here. And this version fits perfectly. So. I'll take and put this in the cabinet and you'll see how that works. I cleaned out space for this tray and the tray fits right there and it's a little bit tighter fit than I thought it was going to be but that's actually perfect because it stays in place nicely. And so now I can put my Heimer in its resting place and it won't be jiggling around in the drawer. It'll be held by all of these. And this part is not a big deal, but the important thing is that the drawer closes so I can open it, grab the Heimer, put it in the machine, and then when I'm done, it has a place and a home to keep it safe. I've collected the various pieces that I printed out for the list of ex extenders that I showed in the uh, previous episode. So let me start out with where I began. There are some <clears throat> critical dimensions here. One of this, them is making sure that the dividers fit in here. And this divider 
does not fit in this one. So then I printed another one, and let's see if this is the other one. Nope, the divider doesn't fit in there either. So I basically kept going and adjusting until I got the divider to fit just right. And by having the cross section be starting at the beginning of the slot and then going a little bit past the slot, it's really easy to see whether or not these fit, and it takes a lot less time to print this. The other thing that was in, another thing that was important is the tabs, uh, making sure that both the tab on this side and the slot here fit with the list of dividers. So I printed out some samples of that and made sure that it worked correctly, adjusted dimensions, etc. The final thing that's important is the basically the top slots and the bottom slots. So you can see there are some tabs here <coughs> and these tabs go into these slots here. Uh, so <clears throat> this, I did some testing to make sure that I had the spacing correct between the tabs and that the tabs were the correct size and the slots were the correct depth. And uh, I think I did more than you see here, but I didn't keep all of the samples. Anyway, this is a, a really quick way to do reverse engineering of an existing product and make something that interoperates with the existing product. 3D scanners are also another really useful tool for getting angles and dimensions correct. So I have the three different dividers here and I can put them down one way so that they're pretty much flat. The other way they're not flat. But I want the, the flattest way down. So I can just put these in place. And then I have a, a, a scale here that has tenths on one side. So I'll put the scale with the tenths down like so and then just go ahead and scan it. And I'll show a picture of the scanned image on the screen, but you can see you can pull that into Fusion 360, use the sizing tool along with the scale to get it just right, and then you can trace over it to get uh, really close on the first try. I hope you found these techniques useful. If you have some other techniques, uh, please comment below, share them with other people. Also, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. All of these things help make my channel more visible to other people, which help grow my channel. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.